Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today, Wendy Murphy, who is a president of the Belmont Women's Club. Wendy, thanks for joining us. You have an important speaker coming up uh, uh, this week. Uh, Patricia McLean is going to be uh, part of the Women's Club speaker series. Can you tell That's us about right. it? Yeah, that's right. And thanks so much for having me, Roger. I'm really glad to be here um, and to share with everyone the opportunity to join us. It's a free event open to the public and Patricia McLean has a very important message. She um, was a victim of domestic violence and managed after many years to escape her situation. And she has now formed a charity, a 501c3 organization based in Maine, which she uses to now reach out to others and empower other women who may be in similar circumstances. So she has an interesting story to tell because Patricia is the ex-wife of well-known singer songwriter, Don McLean, who most of us know, um, sang and wrote the song, Bye Bye Miss American Pie, a very beloved song for most of us. Uh, and she talks a lot in her work about how difficult it was to be trapped in luxury, tr to be trapped in um, a lifestyle where she had a lot of privileges, but was suffering terribly. And, and so we're really excited to have her because I think Belmont is exactly the kind of community where she lived when she was uh, in a difficult marriage. And there are people in Belmont who are suffering. Uh, if you look at the newspaper every week, there are between three and five calls for domestic violence that the police respond to. And I think it's a silent epidemic. So we just wanna open the topic up for discussion and make it okay for everyone, not just women, but for anyone who's struggling in a difficult relationship um, to hear what Patricia has to say, maybe reach out for help if you need it. And just know that the Belmont Women's Club is a resource for you. This is a particularly important month to be, I mean, not that any month it, it is the topic unimportant, but this is a particularly timely topic, right? Yes, this is uh, Women's History Month, which is very important. And maybe, an, uh, you know, the, the kind of month where you want to do a little bit extra to remind people of where women have come from historically in this country, where we are today and where we still have to go. You know, I think maybe today a lot of women think we have made it really far and, you know, we're doing okay. And for some women that's true, but boy, do we still have a lot of struggles and even basic equality is still elusive. Women aren't yet equal persons under the United States constitution yet because we were left out of the 14th amendment in 1868. And we're still not fully equal under the law yet. Most people don't even know that. So this is a really important month for us to continue to have conversations about where we are, celebrate where we've come from, and continue to really pay attention to how far we have to go. I'd like to ask you, why is it important for McLean to, for Patricia McLean, to have a conversation with the broader community uh, and to take it out of one-on-one -on -one or individual conversations? Yeah, really good question, because I think um, it's fair to say that community-wide conversation, conversations are, are different and they need to be different because uh, you know a one-on-one -on -one support system is still a bit secretive and private and for some people easier. But for Patricia, I think what matters to her and why she likes to talk in larger groups and really reach out publicly is that what made her feel silenced for so long was the fact that she didn't see any community-based support out there for her. Uh, it doesn't mean she couldn't have found an individual therapist or worked one-on-one -on -one with someone to help her with whatever she was dealing with emotionally, but that that wasn't really what she needed. She needed to feel that it was okay, that this isn't stigmatizing, that she didn't do anything wrong, that she shouldn't be afraid, um, you know, that there's no shame. But being abused doesn't bring shame to bear on the victim. If anyone should feel shame, it's the abuser. 
Uh, but it is that fear and that shame that made her stay silent for so long and she thought she was alone. So the new organization she's created, which is called Finding Our Voices, is designed explicitly to change that narrative and to get people to understand that having voice is important and feeling alone is unacceptable and letting people know that there's always somewhere you can go, somewhere you can reach out to for help. You made a comment a, a, a moment ago I would like to follow up on. Uh, my impression is that abuse isn't necessarily men on women, that uh, it can be broader than that. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's important to remember that the disproportionate number of victims are female and the disproportionate number of offenders are male. Uh, and that this is by and large a women's problem because as a class of people, we suffer so much more from interpersonal violence than men do. But men absolutely suffer abuse and we have to be really careful to make sure we invite them to uh, feel welcome in our conversations because sometimes feeling um, that you're a man in an abusive situation uh, makes it harder to talk about because it's not manly to describe yourself as being abused, especially by a woman, uh, but it happens. And that masculinity that men feel, that idea that somehow they'll be shamed because why would a man ever be abused by a woman? What's wrong with him is so deeply ingrained in our culture uh, that, it, that it does make it in some ways harder for a man to come forward. And of course we know there are same sex relationships where a man can abuse a man, a woman can abuse a woman, and so forth. Um, so it's really important to remember that women suffer the most, but keeping the door wide open so that everyone has a voice is very important to me. It's very important to me as an activist. It's, I know it's very important to Patricia. Um, people don't realize that five women a day in this country die at the hands of men because of abuse. That's pretty Stunning. stunning. It's a stunning number when you think about it. And it doesn't get a lot of attention in the media. But, you know, if five people a day were dying from anything else in this country, um, I mean, aside from COVID, which is <laughs> its own story. Um, but I think we would be really angry and up in arms and really concerned. And there'd be a lot of public conversations about it. And particularly because women are not yet equal in this country, not yet entitled to equal protection of the law when you aren't getting equal protection of the law, of course you're going to die at higher rates than other categories of people, other classes of people. And we need to put those two things together. Look at the data, see how much suffering women are enduring, including in places like Belmont, and understand that that is primarily caused, or I should say initially and foundationally caused by the lack of equal protection in the law for this, for half the American population. Uh, it's you know, it's just not talked about enough. And for that reason, among many others, um, the silence uh, really perpetuates and contributes to the problem. And that's why Patricia wants to talk about it. She wants to break through that silence to start to get the numbers uh, down and, and start to get more accountability into the system and, you know, part to the extent she can and changing the law so that we do all have equal protections. I'd like to, think for a minute about one other impact of community conversation about it, which is um, it would seem as though it would make it easier for people to not be quiet if they know of something that's going on. So people wouldn't simply say, that's a problem for that family. I don't have a role. There is a community role. There, that there, question there makes sense? Yes, no, I, I hear you. And I think you actually have included, probably um, asked two questions in there. First, uh, you know, um, I guess in terms of the role of the community, um, when you open your arms to a problem, the way Belmont has done with the issue of racism recently, you necessarily are able to help more people and those people are able to ask for more help. It's just inexcusable that we could live in a time when we don't already have that in place because no one should live in a violent home. I mean, it, at a minimum, people shouldn't be living with violence. 
there are other issues, you know, poverty and, and, and mental health problems and so forth that, that are difficult to handle behind closed doors, but violence shouldn't be one of them. And yet it is. And for me, um, you know, the, the role of the community has been difficult to uh, characterize simply when it comes to problems of violence behind closed doors, because we have historically treated, especially violence against women, as a private problem not the public's business. And that comes from our history uh, of laws uh, recognizing uh, that men own their women and that violence against a woman was originally a, um, a crime against a man's property, not a crime against a woman. And we're still crawling out from under that idea. And that's stuck to this notion that if it's happening behind closed doors, uh, it mustn't be the public's business. And I work very hard to get people out of that mindset so that people understand if, you know, if it happens in the middle of Main Street or in the middle of your kitchen, it is equally the public's business. It is equally a crime worthy of public resources um, and public support. And we haven't reached that point yet, even though this kind of violence has been a crime on the books for a very long time. And I was a prosecutor many years ago. I handled these cases. Um, and, and, they're, and they're not that difficult. I like to encourage people to come forward in a sense that I want them to know that when their voices are heard, when they testify in a court of law, they are, they are being respected and listened to and win or lose. That's a lot. It's yes. Just being heard and having those secrets told is enormously therapeutic for, for victims. Um, so that's part of Patricia's philosophy as well is just making sure we don't have secrets that are destructive to us. So Patricia McLean will be speaking at the, uh, uh, the Belmont Women's Club, a virtual presentation. If someone's interested, how and where do they, uh, uh, do they attend? Well, we are opening up this Zoom event for the public. Anybody who wants to join, uh, it's free. It's this Thursday night at 7 p.m. The Zoom link is available Thursday, March 11th. March 11th. And if anyone wants any more information, uh, because she's not our only speaker, we do speakers once a month, uh, most of the year, uh, but they can reach out to us through the email info at belmontwomansclub.org. That's great. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you, Roger. We've been speaking with Wendy Murphy, president of the Belmont Women's Club. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.